Hello there, my name is Adrian and in this lesson we're going to be looking at how to play Search and Destroy by Iggy and the Stooges. Now this is an amazing track with some fantastic raw guitar riffage from the great James Williamson. And I'm going to take you through how to play the entire song. It's made up of a series of three or four different riffs. And uh, if there's time I might also talk about the lead guitar side of things as well. I think the most important thing to bear in mind with this one is not to be too precious about it. It's meant to be played quite loosely with a lot of attitude. So uh, take this lesson as uh, kind of guidelines as to how to play it, but then feel free to uh, interpret it your own way, vary the rhythms a little bit and to uh, make it your own. So let's get started and look at the first riff. Now I'm going to assume before we get started that you already know your E and A form bar chords and also that you know what a power chord is. If you're not sure about that stuff you might want to check out a more basic lesson on my website and get that sorted out first before you attempt to play this song. So let's get stuck in. We're in the key of C sharp here which is quite an unusual key for rock and roll and we're going to start with this chord, it's a C sharp major bar chord. Um, I'm up at the ninth fret here, my first finger is barring across the ninth fret. Uh, I'm also playing the eleventh fret on the fourth and fifth strings, um, which is my, my uh, little finger and my third finger, and I'm playing the tenth fret on the third string with my second finger. So C, C sharp major bar chord, and we're going to be changing from that to an F sharp major. And I'm playing this with a fifth string root, there's my F sharp root note, that's the ninth fret on the fifth string, and I'm also barring at the eleventh fret on the fourth, third and second strings. So that's an F sharp major bar chord. And the pattern we're going to play right at the start of the song, you hear this, and it goes like this. Thing. So we've got a bar of C sharp major, one, two, three, four, playing this with a loose sort of down up feel in the right hand, sort of one and two and three and four and um, and he varies the rhythm quite a lot during this song. You don't have to hit the strings on each of those eight notes, but keep your right hand moving throughout this, this part. Then we're changing to the F sharp and we're going to go that from the F sharp back to the C sharp and we're changing back to the C sharp on an upbeat on the and of three of the of the second bar so we, we can count that one and two and three and four one and two and three and four so it's got a slightly syncopated feel there let me just play the entire two bar pattern so you can hear how that works you've got one two three four one and two and three and four one two three four one and two and three and four so that's the very opening of the song you can if you like throw in some extra flourishes with your right hand that's something James Williamson does quite a lot it's it's something that you hear people like Pete Townsend doing a lot as well this kind of a quick kind of down up down in the right hand so you can do that um, before each chord change uh, so it would would sound something like this you'd have one two three four and one and two Not actually before every chord change, you're just occasionally throwing throwing that in. So um, usually occurs, I think, um, on the upbeat of beat four. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four So that sounds really nice if you can get that in. It's really important there to stay loose and relaxed in your strumming hand if you're going to get those to uh, groove properly. So let's continue. We come now to, we, we play this twice through, then we come to what, what I guess is the main riff of the song. That's the bit that goes like this. 
Um, and let me take you through how to play that. It's all made up of power chords. Reasonably straightforward to play. I think the challenge is just the speed of it, and you've got some quite quick position shifts with your with your fretting hand, which might take a little bit of work to get smooth. We're going to start with our uh, C sharp power chord. We're not playing the full bar chord here, we're just going to play the power chord element of that chord if you like. So we've got just the 9th fret and then the 11th fret on the A and D strings. We're going to play that five times, then we're going to shift two frets lower, play a B power chord once, then we're going to move all three fingers over to the next string set and play an E power chord. So I'm on the 7th fret now on the 5th string and the 9th fret on the 4th and 3rd string. So we've got this. Then we're going to go back to the B power chord, play that just once, then we're immediately going to shift down two more frets to the 5th uh, position and we're playing an A power chord four times. Then we're going to shift position again, this time down to the second position, playing an F sharp power chord just once. Then we're going to move all our fingers down towards the floor and play a B power chord down in the second position. So let me just play through that really slowly and you can see and hear where those chord changes come. We've got one and two and three and four. So a couple of quite quick, slightly tricky position shifts there. We've got the C sharp, B, E, B, A, 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 F sharp, B. Like that. Um, it is played very, very fast, so uh, what I think I find myself doing when it's up to speed is... Um, it's, it's very quick, hard to kind of move all your fingers accurately over to the next string set. So I might play the the power chords on the with the low E string root with my first, third, and fourth fingers. Then when I switch to the fifth string root, I might just lay down my third finger to to bar um, the two notes on the, the third and fourth strings. That just makes the, the the whole riff a little bit smoother, I think. So after we've done that power chord riff. We're back to our initial two chord pattern. So we play the power chords with all down strokes. That's where you can really hear him digging in with the down strokes. Also with a little bit of palm muting for that, for just for the power chord section. And then when we return to the chords, playing that with a down up movement in your right hand and that's the opening riff to the song. So we have the main riff which serves as an introduction to the song it's also played underneath the verses of the song. Then we come on to what I'm going to call the pre-chorus and it starts off with uh, some more power chords goes like this <laughs> Again, quite simple power chords here, but uh, we'll take some practice to get those changes smooth because it is played quite quickly. I'm going to start with another C sharp power chord. This time for the pre chorus, I'm going to play it with a fifth string root. So I've got the um, fourth fret on the fifth string with my first finger, and then the sixth fret on the fourth and third strings with my third and little fingers. And I'm just going to play that once. Then I'm going to move all of these fingers upwards to the next string set to play a G sharp power chord. I play that three times. So we've got C sharp to G sharp. Then we're going to do exactly the same thing in the second position. So that will mean you're playing a B power chord to an F sharp power chord. You're going to go exactly what we just did in the fourth position 
we're going to move it down to the second position. Then we're going to move to an A power chord using an open A string. So I've got an open A and I'm barring at the second fret on the fourth and third strings with the first finger. And um, I think we're playing that one, two, three, three times. Then we're moving to an E power chord again with an open string. So we've got open low E barring the second fret on the fifth and fourth strings. Just going to play that once and then we're going to jump back to our B power chord at the, uh, the second fret on the A string. Let me just put all of that together. We're starting off in the fourth position with a C sharp power chord. Second position, open A, E, B, one and so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. A lot of those chords are on the the upbeats there. You've got quite a bit of syncopation in there. So listen to the recording for that and uh, you count count out the beats if you have to but the best way to get that I think is just by by listening and doing it by ear. Next part of the pre-chorus sounds like this we've got more power chords power chords but they're connected together by some little single note linking runs which are, are really nice. I'm going to start off with um, an F power chord in the first position playing the first fret on the low E, third fret on the A and D strings. I'm going to play that and I'm going to slide it up one fret to an F sharp power chord. Play that four times I think and then another four times actually so one, two, three, four, one. then we've got our first linking uh, sort of single note line which goes like this which is just the second fret on the low E to the fourth fret then the second fret on the A to the fourth fret so far we've got this. Then we're playing an A power chord. Um, I'm playing this in the fifth fifth position with a, a low E string root. One, two, three, four, one, two. Then another um, single note linking line. Got open A string, then second fret on the A string. 4th fret on the A string, 2nd fret on the D string. So we have this. I suppose you could play that A power chord um, as an open A power chord. It does, doesn't make much, much difference where you play that really. I, I, I was playing it I think um, in the 5th position. Uh, so where, where, where have we got to? Um, coming on to an E chord and I think this time he's playing a full a full open E chord you can hear some of the sweeter higher notes creeping in there so we've got an E chord another four note single line this is the the same as the first one it's the uh, second to fourth fret on the low E second to fourth fret on the A string it's always the same rhythm on these bits it's one two three four one two three and four and then finally just before we hit the chorus we've got two bars of a G sharp power chord that's in the fourth fourth fret on the low E and sixth fret on the A and D string so two bars of that one two three four one two three four and all of this pre-chorus section I'm playing with quite aggressive down strokes so uh, maybe it'd be helpful if I just put all of that together slowly so you can hear hear how that works. I'll go from the start of the pre-chorus. So we've got, I'll just turn up 
a little bit. A one, two, three, four. pre-chorus riff. So the first time you hear the pre-chorus in the song it doesn't actually lead to the chorus, it leaves us waiting a little bit longer before we actually hear the chorus. We go around for another verse and then another pre-chorus before we then eventually hit the chorus. And the chorus chords are actually exactly the same chords as the first part of the pre-chorus. They're just played a little bit differently. We're sort of playing these chords as longer sustained notes. And it's the same chord shapes we were using earlier. So we start with our C sharp power chord, it's that fifth string root in the fourth position. Then quickly we play G sharp power chord, that's uh, with a sixth string root. Shift down to the second position. B power chord with a fifth string root there. Then shift all of our fingers up to the next set of strings, same position, play an F sharp power chord, the sixth string root. Then we play our open A power chord, which moves to our open E power chord, and then we play our B power chord. Again, so it's exactly the same shapes as this bit but we're playing them in a slightly different rhythm. We're playing it like this. So let me take you through the rhythm. That might be the, the, the main thing you find tricky about the chorus part because it is quite syncopated and lots of these chords are on what are called pushes where you're changing on the and of beat four rather than on the, the one of the bar. So we've got um, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So we're changing on the and of three and the and of four, I think. You might be one of these lucky people who can just feel this stuff naturally, in which case that, that's great. But if you find yourself struggling, then you might want to count your way through this part, in which case you would go one and two and three and four changing to the next chord on the and of three and the and of four. And that really is the chorus part of the song. I think that repeats four times. Again, he sometimes throws in these little Pete Townsendish flourishes with the right hand, but that's that's the, the, the basic part, I think. I want to finish off just talking briefly about the lead guitar side of this song. Now I'm not going to take you through every lead guitar lick in this song note for note because that would be far too tedious uh, for me and for you as well. And I don't really think it's in the spirit of this kind of music and in the spirit of the Stooges to learn this stuff anally note for note off the record when it's undoubtedly an improvised solo in the studio and he's just kind of going for it. So I think it's more important just to capture the spirit of what James Williamson is playing and uh, then kind of play your own ideas in this style. But having said that, I will just briefly take you through how to play the opening lead guitar break. This is before the first verse, just because I think that's quite a nice lead break and it's, it's quite a kind of signature part of the song, which it might be worth looking at in a bit more detail. We're in the key of C sharp here and the, the scale that James Williamson is using is the C sharp minor pentatonic scale, just the standard minor pentatonic scale that everybody should know, played in the, the ninth position. And then uh, he does actually go up to the little extended box pattern in the second uh, position of this scale. 
um, occasionally as well. But let me just play you the opening solo and then I'll take you through it. I'm going to have to consult my notes here because I haven't uh, memorized this yet, but it goes something like this. <laughs> Something along those lines, I think that was pretty close. Uh, but it is played quite messily, quite erratically, and that's part of the charm of it. So I will show you these, what I just played, but um, don't feel you have to reproduce it exactly like this. I'm gonna start off by playing 11th fret on the D string, 9th fret on the G string. Then I'm gonna bend the 11th fret on the G string. I'm gonna bend it up, release the bend, then I'm going to play the 9th fret on the G string twice, 11th fret on the D string, 9th fret on the G string, 9th, sorry, 11th fret on the G string, going to start with the 11th fret on the 4th string, then the 9th fret on the 3rd string, going to bend the 11th fret on the 3rd string and release the bend, then I'm going to play the 9th fret on the 3rd string twice, then the 11th fret on the 4th string, that's the first bar. Then I'm going to continue with the 9th fret on the 3rd string, 11th fret on the 3rd string, back to the 9th fret, then I'm going to play the 11th fret, I'm going to bend up and release the bend, um, I mean it's a roughly a, roughly a 2 fret bend, it might be a little bit flat there. Then I'm going to play the 9th fret again, the 3rd string, 11th fret and 9th fret and then just finish off with the 11th fret on the 4th string. That's the first lick, so slowly we've got... Something like that, so it's fairly standard sort of noodling around the minor pentatonic scale there. Um, then for the next lick we're going up a little bit higher, we're going to start with a bend at the 12th fret on the 2nd string, then we're going to play the 9th fret on the 1st string and we're going to bend again the 12th fret on the 2nd string, release the bend, then we're going to go 9, 12, 9, 12 on the B string followed by 9, 12 on the high E string. So, so far for this second lick we've got then we've got a quick position shift up to the 12th position and we continue with 14th fret on the second string 12th fret on the high E string then we're bending the 14th fret on the high E string bending that up two frets up a tone bend it up and release, pull off to the 12th fret, then we've got to pull off from the 14th fret to the 12th fret on the 2nd string, then we're playing the 12th fret on the high E, 14th fret on the high E, and finally back to the 12th fret on the high E, maybe just giving that a little bluesy push up with your first finger and we're finally playing 14th fret on the B string. So see what I mean by how tedious this whole process is. Um, let me just play that lick one more time slowly. We've got... So there we have it, that's the intro solo. Um, in my opinion far better just to kind of 
improvise your own ideas in that kind of style. Um, so far less time consuming and will sound far far cooler than trying to reproduce exactly what's going on the, on the record in, in that in this instance. Well that's it for this lesson. I'm going to leave it to you to piece together the structure of this song. Just have a listen to the original and you should be able to hear which riff goes where. As far as the rest of the lead guitar stuff goes, it's all played using the C-sharp minor pentatonic scale, so I suggest you have a noodle around that scale yourself and come up with your own lead guitar ideas. I want to finish just by saying remember to play this song loosely, play it with a lot of attitude and don't worry about getting it absolutely perfect. In fact imperfections are important when it comes to this style of music and they're what give it a lot of its character so in this instance perfection is actually a bad thing. Hope you have a lot of fun learning this song and I'll see you again for another lesson very soon. Bye bye.